morning everyone, how are you? Today I want to take you on a tour of our front garden. I'll show you a few successes that I've had and a few mistakes that I've definitely made. Right here I want to start with the three Olivia Rose Austin roses that I planted a few months ago. Quick uh, story on those. I thought they had died because they went into such severe shock when all the dirt fell away. Thankfully, they're good. They've all bloomed uh, once and you know they're relatively new roses so I've trimmed them back or deadheaded them, not trimmed them back I should say. Deadheaded them and they'll come back again and as soon as they get a little bit bigger and a little bit more mature, I'll put some pictures on Instagram for you. In between the roses, I landed up filling up the area with some annual zinnias. And I wanted to leave this area open so the roses would have a chance to breathe. But since they're so young and they've not grown to their mature size, I thought that I would fill in a little bit of annuals. And then in the fall, I would like to try my hand at some tulips. So when it gets a little cooler and the zinnias come up, I'll put some tulip bulbs in there. And of course, along the front area here, we have the dark purple osteospermin, African daisies. And I think this side is not getting as much water as this side, so I'm going to have to remedy that. Here is the purple iris that I have. And last year, when I think when I did the tour, all my irises had bloomed, and they definitely have all my white ones. This is the only purple one that I have. And Lo and behold, a purple bloom showed up a few days ago, so that's always exciting. This is one of the first of our Peter Pans that haven't bloomed yet. They still, their buds are still covered, uh, but it won't take but a few days and they'll all begin to shed this sh shell, if you will, and they'll all begin to bloom. All the majority of my other ones are already blooming. In the whale barrel, I took out the snapdragons because, of course, they don't like the heat. I put in a diamond frost euphorbia and the Super Bell's doublet love swept, and they seem to be happy in there. Behind the whale barrel, you'll notice that was one of the geraniums that we divided, and it's coming along uh, rather well. Next time if I ever divide them, I'll make sure I do it in the fall, but I'll, they are living and alive. <laughs> and that's what I'm most concerned about. And then the other one will be right over here next to the rosebush and the zinnias. Along the edge of the lawn, I decided to plant vincas. And I'll explain why I decided to line this area because I, I have it on the back side over here and I'll explain why I put them on the front side as well, but they're doing well because of course love the heat and uh, we have a lot of heat here in Central California. Here are the, some of the Peter Pans that are blooming already. Behind that you'll see my attempt, <laughs> my first attempt at planting dahlias. And so they are beginning to come up behind there. I put them here on the back side of the Peter Pans because I thought that could be a natural staking system for me. What I didn't anticipate is the snails and the slugs love the agapanthus, and of course the dahlia leaves are really sweet. So I've had to kind of battle that, but um, they haven't bloomed yet, but they, at least they're growing. One of my successes are these vincas that are right here that I've lined the backside of our lawn with. These vincas are the ones that I pulled up where I planted the African daisies. I read online where you could trim them way down, and I did that, and during the winter they just sat dormant here, and I thought, well, it's, a, it's an experiment I'm gonna try, and sure enough, they've come back. So I think what I'm gonna do is all these vincas that are here lined on my lawn, I will keep them there, and each winter I'll trim them back, and they'll come up full of flowers in the spring. Probably mostly summer, <laughs> not so much spring. Behind the vincas, I've added more galardia, which is also called blanket flower. 
they do very well here in the heat and you can tell the older ones versus the newer ones because they're much bigger far more mature but I added more because I wanted it to be more of a drift and so by next year they'll all should be touching each other and be one you, where you won't see where one ends and the other begins behind the galardia I took out the black lace elderberry and I put it in our back garden I did that because I don't think it was happy here. It was alive, but it really never pushed a lot of growth. And so I added the Imperial Blue Plumbago. That has also struggled, and the only reason why I think it has struggled, because a few of my other plants back here have, is we were hit with 110, 111 temperatures for a series of days. And you can probably see there's a little hole right here between the two plumbagos, I've been putting up an umbrella during the day just to protect it from the hottest part of the day. Of course, I have a red fountain grass that's uh, coming along. A lot of the fountain grasses that I picked up last year, I picked up on clearance. The butterfly bushes, you can tell, are struggling. That's because we had some really hot days and they got hit with afternoon sun. They're alive, but they're not really happy right now. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for them to come back. So eventually they'll all grow and become a little bit more mature and more full. And uh, I think the umbrella that I'm putting up during the afternoon will help uh, give them a little bit of reprieve from that hardest part of the day, which is around five or six o'clock for us and we're coming up on more 108, 109 temperatures. Behind that are the two Uwanimus, and if you can tell the one on the left side, finally filled in from last year. So that, they both look, you know, nicely shaped, and I'm really happy with that. I wish my gladiolas were blooming. I've had several blooms that, you know, have died out, and I've cut them off, but I have a couple that are getting ready to bloom here to, uh, near the far end of this fence and I'll probably add more gladiolas next year I wasn't sure how many I wanted to put in this area but I will add some more this coming fall the two urns up front of my entryway are doing really well with the boxwood I wanted to trim them but because it warmed up so quickly I was afraid to so I think I'm gonna wait till fall because our summer, I have a feeling, is gonna be hot. I mean, just, I, yeah, June has been a very, very hot uh, month for us. And it looks like July's gonna be the same. <laughs> the carrots, you can tell, is practically touching the lawn. I think I planted this, was it October, November? And uh, it's doing well. And the Proven Winners uh, Double Moon Glow is doing well. Here is one of my mistakes. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed and bummed, because trust me, I had a moment. This is Supertunia, Royal Velvet and Bordeaux from Proven Winners. Beautiful uh, annuals. I planted them all in. They were doing amazing. We came up on some hot weather. I mean, I, I, have to, I know I've said it a few times, but we were not expecting the 110, 111. And because I can only water on certain days, I was afraid that they would get too hot. So what did I do? I came in and I started supplemental watering them. And I gave them too much water. So it was my mistake. So I've lost a few. <laughs> and I thought, well, I could add a few more on the in the areas that I've lost them and turn off the drip uh, knowing that I've overwatered them and the reason why I think I overwatered them is when I pulled out the dead ones they weren't dry the root ball wasn't dry it was completely wet um, so that's why I know it was my mistake anyway lesson learned I know now that I don't need to give them extra water when it gets really hot that they should be able to withstand it. On the border I still have the alyssum. For the most part I've kept them all year round. I've had to put in a couple of new ones that have uh, 
dyed, but I do like the look of the front of the lawn here being lined with the list. And behind that are Ruby Slipper Coleus. And wow, that is such a beautiful plant. Around the bird bath are the Wizard of Oz Veronica that I have already cut back once and they're coming back again um, compared to last year. They've really filled in nicely. Coming along the front side here is, I don't know if you want to try and catch a cat of it this way, maybe coming back the other way. The Peter Pans, you can tell this is what I mean by Bill Shed their casing and then all these will begin to open up the red fountain grasses that I picked up on clearance last year are doing really well and uh, not bad for five dollars a pop between the red fountain grass and the Peter Pans I have pink bandana lantana that's very difficult to find those as a large mature plant so that's why you only see a few of them that are kind of somewhat larger. The rest are smaller. And they'll eventually get the same height. And what will happen as the Peter Pans die off and I have to trim the stalks, the Lantana will be the show. And I have to say, probably out of all the Lantana, the pink bandana is the most difficult for me to find over here. Behind the alyssum are Rock and Fuchsia Salvia. Last year I bought three of them that I put here between the Agapanthus and they have matured and just put on a lot of growth. I decided that I wanted to add, I think one, two, three, I think I added three extra. So they're very, very small. You can probably tell on the other side of this Peter Pan, but next year then we'll mature to the same size and the honeybees just love them. In between these two salvia are sunshine lucustrum that you can tell the edges here have been a little burned and that's from our weather that we've had and then of course my white irises that um, are that have been here they were here when I bought the house 20 years ago behind that is the adiago grass and um, I think it's a Prince Tut. <laughs> Sorry. But this is all matured compared to last year uh, when we did the tour. Right here by the hanging basket is a gara that I trimmed down to about four inches off the ground. It has not flowered and it's kind of growing a little strange. It's not what I thought gara would look like. Not sure if I'm going to keep it here. <laughs> because it's not blooming um, we'll see in the basket I have a Carex sweetheart line sweet potato vine from Proven Winners I either have Super Bell's Holy Smoke or Holy Cow and the reason why I don't know is because I bought so many of them I completely forgot to spray them for budworm so it's going to take a few weeks for the buds to come back but that's inside the basket over here on the other side of the Adiago grass, we, uh, I haven't even cut the tag off. Oh my goodness. A rose tree called Strike It Witch. Gorgeous, peachy, yellow, pink blooms. Um, there was a gara there, and it was growing the same way this one was. The gara that was there, I trimmed back. I put it in the backyard because I didn't care for that particular structure. I think the rose tree is gonna add um, a lot more color and um, just better structural interest and because we have such a long growing season here I think the roses will you know pretty much from spring to winter uh, almost be blooming all the time. In the window box I have jet black sweet potato vine from Proven Winners and Rockapuco Rose Impatience and um, they're not blooming right this minute, but they will. This area receives a lot of shade. It used to be in the sun, but it receives more shade than sun now because uh, this maple has gotten very mature and has blocked most of the sun.
scare off to the very edge where you can see our stucco issues and I know I repeated myself far too many times. We will get this house stuccoed someday. Um, hopefully it'll be this year. We finally put in a post rail up at the top and what we will do is sink these stepping stones a bit because they are very tall and then um, what I've always wanted to do is kind of do a ground cover uh, in between this area right here so that way it'll just keep an open walkway for us to kind of get back to the back of the plants in here and also to uh, use the hose. I think this is going to be a big transformation uh, when we can sink these stones and get some ground cover in here. Around the redwoods last year, I planted lemon ball sedum. When I was trimming it, because I do like to keep it looking a little bit tidy, my husband likes it to look a little bit more bushier, I landed up pulling out too much when I was trimming it, and it seems like it doesn't attach very deep to the ground. And so what I was able to do uh, during the springtime, I got a hold of some lemon coral sedum on clearance, and I filled in the gaps with lemon coral and you can't tell where the lemon ball and the lemon coral mix together. And I, I think I said it last year, I'll probably keep this border for as long as it lasts because I really do enjoy it. It's pretty much maintenance free. The geraniums bloomed heavily during, I'd say between February and April and they'll probably push some more blooms at some point, but they're taking a bit of a break. In the middle, we added, I think it was it December, the electric lime pucra, and that's beginning to mature and fill in real well. Of course, every year I like to add impatience under here. Impatience can be tricky, uh, but I have found that they really love being in this area because we get a good portion of morning sun, and then the rest of the day, this area is fully shaded. So, they seem to be happy here, and I like the color that it adds. Then in the back there, in the middle, is the Hakanakloa that I picked up at Green Hills Nursery. That's doing well. Off to the side is the Hakanakloa that I rescued last year. I think they're two different varieties because uh, this one, I think, is more variegated where the one I purchased at Green Hills is uh, more of a solid color. Either way, I like them, and I think I'm gonna go back and buy the rest of them and just find somewhere else to put them. This is a Chinese pistache tree that we planted about five, six years ago, and that was because the 30-year-old mature tree that we had here just collapsed and fell in the street, had the city come and had to pick it up a, in not grind it, but um, moved all the huge branches. It was like midnight, one o'clock in the morning because it fell on the, some cars and it blocked the street. Anyway, my husband wanted to put this rock border around the tree and I kind of hedged on it <laughs> for a while. I said, oh, okay, go ahead and put it around there because of course the grass wouldn't grow right up to it, to the tree. And we landed up putting vincas around it and I can't tell you how many people, <laughs> my family members have stopped by and complimented me on the flowers around the tree so it's a hit he won <laughs> that's it for the tour a lot of the plants are far more mature this year than last year and I'm really happy with how it's coming along and growing I have so much more that I want to add and uh, make it more colorful thank you guys so much for watching I hope your summer has gotten off to a really great start and we'll see you soon bye